like to call to order the Village of Riverside Board of Trustees regular meeting for Thursday, May 19, 2022. Um, can all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ethan, if would you please call the roll? President Ballerine. Here. Trustee Evans. Here. Trustee Galagos. Here. Trustee Marshazga. Here. Trustee Pollock. Here. Village Manager Francis. Here. Village Attorney Molina. Here. Also present, Village Clerk Soul. Thank you. Uh, my, my president's report tonight, I have one, I only have one item. Um, last Tuesday, Riverside was honored with a visit from Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker who stopped at Riverside Foods to highlight the recently passed package of tap cuts to help parents struggling with high food prices and rapid inflation. The governor also took time to visit the home of John and Jousey Teklik, Riverside residents, and their son, Ethan. I would like to thank our hometown, our hometown representative, Mike Zalewski, for arranging the visit. Mike has always had the best interests of our community at heart, and I want him and all, and all, of, and all of you to know how much we appreciate that fact. For a small village as our own to host the chief executive of the state is not only truly amazing, but also a very memorable day for Riverside. Thank you. That's all I have. Ms. Francis. Thank you, President Ballerine. I have uh, two items uh, this evening. One is I'd like to acknowledge Public Works as it is National Public Works Week, and it runs from May 15th through the 21st. Um, we've got a really great crew on our public works team, and whether it's snow removal or mowing, um, you name it, rain or shine, regardless of the temperature, they are out there. And so I just wanted to extend my thanks to that team um, this week, well, every day, but especially this week. Um, also, I wanted to note to the village board, um, given in anticipation of uh, canceling the June 2nd board meeting, um, we had some late additions for special event applications. And so in anticipation of still having these events while also canceling that meeting on June 2nd, um, if the board would allow administrative review of these two items, and then we would include it to be ratified. Um, the two items are for Riverside Arts Weekend, and the other item would be for Lantern Nights. Um, and if the board is supportive of this, which based on some of the feedback that I've received, um, the board would also be interested um, potentially in providing administrative review of special event applications. And so that would potentially be um, a policy update with also different um, requirements as part of that administrative review. I just want to make sure that everyone's supportive. Yes. 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 Th thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Um, is there any written comments from residents for non-agenda items? Hearing none, we will be moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, on the consent agenda tonight is the approval voucher list of bills May 19th, 2022. Approval of the Village Board of Trustees regular meeting minutes May 5th, 2022. Review and file public works, fire, police, and April monthly reports. Review and fire police pension regular meeting minutes February 10th, 22. Review and file police pension special meeting minutes, March 1st, 2022. Review and file police pension special meeting minutes, April 19th, 2022. Review and file landscape advisory commission regular meeting minutes, April 12th, 2022. Review and file the board of fire and police commissioners regular meeting minutes, February 8th, 2022. Review and file Riverside TV regular meeting minutes, April 11th, 2022. A motion to approve a train station rental advocate rental application for the Krug birthday party to be held on June 30th, 2022. It's Alex's 30th birthday, if anyone wants to know. A motion to approve a train station rental application for the Sh Sharp graduation party to be held on June 5th, 2022. A resolution authorizing the sale or disposal of personal property owned by the Village of Riverside. And a motion to approve a resolution of the Village of Riverside, Illinois, to approve an extension 
to provide professional audit service from Lauterbach and Amon LLP for fiscal year ending December 31st, 2022 through fiscal year ending December 31st, 2024. Do any of these items need to be removed? Hearing none, uh, I would ask for a motion. Motion made. A motion by Trustee Gallego, second. Second. Second by Trustee Marsh Asga. Ethan? Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Galagos. Aye. Trustee Marshaska. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, Department, Board, and Commission reports. Director Johns. Good evening. As preparation for our annual audit, I've been doing some review of the sales tax received from the Village of Riverside. As previously reported, um, Riverside now receives online sales tax for purchases shipped to Riverside addresses. This has been a large shift in our, the sales tax figures that have been coming in. So I wanted to do a quick report. And for the months of December through February, 51.8% of sales tax received came, came from Riverside brick and mortar businesses and 48.2% came from online sales. This is a great new revenue source for the village. Um, and just wanted to remind everyone to please ship your packages to your Riverside addresses. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Appreciate that. Is there any other reports? Uh, I do just have two reports. Uh, one is somewhat preservation related. Um, as you all know, the National Park Service and the Village of Riverside have been working together for years uh, to update the designation of the Riverside Historic District with additional documentation and a corrected western boundary. Uh, last Thursday, there was some progress in connection with this. The National Historic Landmarks Committee of the National Park Service Advisory <coughs> Board uh, considered the nomination and voted unanimously to approve it with a provision that a section on Riverside's social history be added added along with a few minor edits in other sections. Um, I've asked our contact at the National Park Service if we can get a copy of that when it is finalized, and um, it may take a little while to research and write, but I think that the Park Service would like to wrap up the amendment process this year, especially as it would coincide with the 200th anniversary of Olmstead's birth. So we're moving along with that one. Um, my other report is uh, from the LAC, and that is, um, a few items to note. On Friday, May 13th, Mike Collins and the LAC met together with Integrated Lakes Management for the first of two educational training sessions in Swan Pond. The goal of those sessions is to ensure that um, our, you know, LAC has a strong understanding of how um, Swan Pond is properly managed as a natural area, how to best remove invasives and reestablish strong native plantings appropriate to the environment. Uh, Nomo May is still in swing, and the LAC is working with our new communications professional, Amy Downing, to get educational pieces out to the community about spring ephemerals and pollinators to round out the month. Finally, on May 28th, the LAC will be doing a spring cleanup at Triangle 55, which is located at Bartram and Northgate. Um, the planting of that triangle will take place on June 18th, and the LAC welcomes volunteers from the community to join in this process. So you can reach out to the LAC at lac at riverside.il.us uh, for more information. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Marshasco, and thank you very much for taking the lead on the, the conference call on Thursday. You did a wonderful job outlining our, uh, our application. So. Appreciate that. Happy to do so. Um, there is no need for uh, pending business tonight, um, so we will move on to new business. Um, first thing on our uh, new business agenda is a, re a resolution revising the economic incentive policy for the village of Riverside. Ms. Francis. Thank you. Um, so if the board recalls, on December 17, 2020, the original policy was adopted. Since then, <clears throat> we've had um, different inquiries about different economic incentives, and of note, since that point in time, we've started to build our fund balances within our business districts. And I bring this before you because we've also had different businesses within those business districts 
asking about incentive um, or talking about potential expansion. So Cubanito Express is a good example of that where um, they didn't come to the village for any type of economic incentive or relief as part of them coming to Riverside. And while we waived certain licenses per the village board for over this past year, um, I think it's important to remember within the business district, those monies are there to then be reinvested in those businesses, in those areas, whether infrastructure, public improvements, or even private improvements, or to attract new businesses, generally speaking, to um, a storefront that's been vacant. So in part of that, I drafted the amendment to our economic incentive policy which you'll find in the agenda packet. It is redlined on page 127. And the changes, consideration of any of these incentives, which include any financial expenditure by the village, shall be set forth within a development incentive agreement. I have added economic development assistance grant program slash agreement or like document. And a, you know, a like document could also be potentially a rebate program, which we have done in the past as different economic incentives. Um, and finally, I added in businesses applying for the economic development assistant grant program must complete the application, provide supporting documentation prior to the grant request being submitted to the village board for consideration. And another example, as I noted, within the agenda history sheet is um, some of the work that we're looking or anticipating to be done in the parking lot um, that we are selling to Dr. Normati um, in anticipation of the dispensary being open to allow for different parking for both his parcel and the dispensary. There were certain things that came up as part of that zoning process that the board had asked about different enhancements. And so as part of this program, and speaking with Dr. N, he was open to the fact of allowing the village to do the landscape design if it were at our cost. He was open to allowing the village to utilize our street furniture, which is important to us for consistency, not only within the central business district, but bringing that out to Harlem Avenue. And so it's those different pieces, while we would still bring it back to the village board for final approval, this helps staff, it equips us with the tools to have those dialogues and discussions and to bring back a plan to the village board. In addition to that, if you know these different businesses didn't necessarily have the means up front, we have worked with Riverside Bank in the past about different uh, funding programs and where we would connect them with Riverside Bank for them to sit down and talk about a loan program so that depending on what is afforded to them, whether it's 100% reimbursement whether it's an 80-20% or whatever the board chooses to elect, as part of those conversations, then they can figure out what is financially feasible for them. Um, so I think it's a great opportunity. It was written very broad. And so as part of the packet, I've also included the, the grant program along with the form that would need to be completed. All of this is subject to board approval of this program, and then we would begin implementation effective immediately, which could be a great opportunity because Cubanito Express is looking at trying to create outdoor seating this year in short order, and so that would be a great benefit to them. Um, and then also, Director Johns had provided me with where we're projecting at, um, year-end fund balance for both well, for all three business districts. So the two business districts we're talking about with the parking lot for, for us would be Harlem Business District number one. Um, please note that that does not contemplate the revenue for sale of our parcel, so this number will look different. It will no longer be in the red. Um, and then also Harlem Business District number two, which is currently has a fund balance and we are projecting at year end to be approximately 31,000. And so I also included from the business district plans the relatively what those monies can be utilized for. 
And so just the board being aware of these different things, I wanted to get the feedback, get the guidance so that we can get these programs off the ground because as we have noticed as staff, you know, these different economic incentive programs and waivers are really helping facilitate businesses coming to Riverside. And so while we all were, while we are having a certain capital outlay, we will see those different returns. And so the, the goal of this program is to fill up those vacant storefronts and make great enhancements. So it's value added to the Riverside community. We're adding different amenities that Riverside residents have asked for for years. And it becomes a pleasant experience down the Harlem Avenue corridor. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, hearing, I, I have one. Um, you have You have, you laid out the, um, the fund balances of the three business districts. Mm -hmm. um, um, what about a business district in the central business district? Central. Anyway. So to clarify, these were specially established with certain requirements to create the business district tax. And so therein lies the difference for this program versus anything that we would afford within our central business district. Now, could the board do something for, for those that are within the central business district? Yes. And to that, I would say we have. And so if the board wants to reopen, for example, the facade program. So we have we didn't budget anything for this year, but we've had some recent calls about, oh, are we doing any facade programs for businesses within the central business district? And so what we've told those businesses is give us your information, fill out the forms, and we can bring it back to the board. Nothing has been appropriated at this point in time. Um, but these dollars within business district one, two, and three can only be reinvested in those within that boundary. So it can't be reallocated to the central business district. And so the businesses there assess an additional tax, which then is held um, to be reinvested. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes, Trustee Pollock. Uh, uh, Manager Francis, did we look at creating a downtown business improvement district and it wasn't eligible, we thought, or? So, that's an interesting question. Um, so, you have to um, validate there's a certain level of blight. Right. Um, and so, that actually has come up in a recent conversation with Director Johns and I, are can we meet that that level of expectation as far as statutorily. I don't have that answer. Um, I think with some of our vacant storefronts and those that have sat on the market, there's a possibility, so there's potential. Um, and if the board would like, staff will certainly, you know, reach out to Kane McKenna, who did our previous That's three business districts. Person, yeah and they can tell us whether or not, based on prelim information, if we could meet what is statutorily required, and if so, if the board wants to engage into agreement and start that process for them. I know that other communities um, in close proximity to us have done not only tax increment districts, but business districts. I think, I don't know that we would meet what's required for a tax increment financing district, um, but the bar is a little lower for a business district. Go ahead. Yes, and I, I don't want the public to think we're talking about TIF districts. No, Because no. that's a whole different animal. Yes. Uh, business improvement districts <clears throat> do not affect other taxing bodies. Um, but I, I would like staff at least to glance at it and make an opinion as to whether they think it's worth having Kane McKenna engaged. I will tell you on our cursory review, I would say yes, it's something that I, I think based on some of the vacancies um, that we've had longer vacancies or turnover in storefronts that it, it makes it a little bit easier to make that argument. I, would we be talking about and this may be, would we be talking about three new districts? So the no. Water Tower District, the Burlington District, and the Quincy District? No. So 
correct me if I'm wrong. So as long as it is continuous, even if it is bisected by a rail line, it is still considered continuous. And so it can be segmented for Burlington, for um, East Avenue, and then kind of come down and around to Quincy, yes. So it could follow where our business district, our CBD but district is currently. Yeah, we would look at that contiguity and make sure it's met, but the idea would be to have as few as possible, ideally one, okay. one more. Okay, thank you. And, and you other? might want to include the train station for that matter because we do have uh, a current business in there. Okay, any other questions? Yes, well, Doug. Is that sufficient to direction to staff to yeah. proceed with that? Any, any I believe so. Do I have head nods? No objection. No objection. I, I was just curious how much roughly Kane McKenna charged to uh, create a business district. So the larger business district, now we're going off of old number. Okay, Karen. <laughs> roughly, yeah. roughly is right. fine. And, and, and also what I think Jessica is going to do is she would just get Phil McKenna to do a, like a 10,000 foot overview. overview. It wouldn't involve a full report unless the board wanted to go that route so the creation of business district two and three was approximately twenty five thousand in total for all the plans required for that so for one business district it would be somewhere around i'd assume 15 to 17. okay and i apologize for not knowing this because i'm relatively new but um when it was funded in the past, the Central Business District uh, facade improvement programs, r roughly how much were we talking? That I went believe in we budgeted ten to 15,000. I don't think we depleted those resources at that point in time. Um, so, and also to another point related to the fees, the fee, so, if inevitably the business district is established, we would then charge any time, not, not staff time, but any direct bills. So legal bills, the bill for actually creation, creation of the business district, um, our engineer has to create a boundary map. So all of those costs would then be charged back and paid out of that business district fund. And so it wouldn't be utilizing general fund or capital project resources. In the past, the facade program was paid essentially out of general fund unassigned. Okay, and what is the, the tax, the percentage that would be added to a business? 1% okay. and retail sales. Okay, and yes. Um, I really like the policy. Thank you, Thank staff, you. for putting this together for us. I think the focus on Harlem is the right thing to do. Um, I was wondering when we would be able to roll this out and um, what would be the plan to let the businesses know that we're going to have this availability. So Assistant Village Manager Monroe has actually already been talking to Cubanito Express, um, but then we would also reach out. I don't know if it would be in person or if we would be doing email, but we would definitely let them know about this. Um, you know, and it's a balance too of, you know, right now we only have 30,000 and so once that money's depleted, that's a further question for the board. Are we okay with the general fund loaning money to the business district if we've got businesses that want to do something now? Um, and so what does, what does that look like? Because obviously the general fund loaned those districts money when we were first establishing them and everything obviously is tracked. Um, but as it relates to the parking lot and Cubanito Express, I'm gonna try really hard to get something to you by the next board meeting um, because I think time is of the essence. Um, and you know, if we can get some agreement on some of those different pieces that the board found desirable for the, um, for the, the parking lot, um, getting those different enhancements done as part of the permit um, and then having that partnership also with Dr. N as the, the new owner will be value added because if you recall, we're also looking at doing some sort of signage on the property. 
And so it's really a discussion of where that's best placed and where is he willing to allow us to, to do that. And so that will also be value added to the village. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'd like to have a motion. Motion made. Motion by Trustee Galgo, second. Second. Second by Trustee Marshaska. Any further questions? Hearing none, Ethan. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Galagos. Aye. Trustee Marshaska. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. Motion passes. Um, second thing on our agenda tonight is a motion to approve a resolution authorizing $1,338,983 interfund transfer from the general fund to the capital project funds for future capital expenditures. Director Johns. Good evening. Tonight before you, there is a transfer request for $150,000 from general fund parks and rec assigned fund balance for repayment of 43 Quincy build out. I wanted to note that this exceeds the required repayment schedule of 25,000 by six times and Parks and Rec Department is um, really trying to pay this debt back to the, the general fund as soon as possible. This is um, feasible because of the, the great performance that they had in fiscal year 2021. Also a request to transfer $1,188,983 in general fund unassigned fund balance to cover 2022 budgeted capital purchases. Any questions? Okay, great job. Uh, there's not very many villages that could say they had a $1 million um, budget surplus. So thank you very much. You're welcome. You guys did a great job. Uh, can I ask for a motion? And motion a made. Motion by Trustee Gallego. Second. Second. Second by Trustee Pollock. Ethan, if you please call the roll. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Gallegos. Aye. Trustee Marshaska. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. And or, uh, number three, an ordinance amending the budget for the fiscal year commencing January 1st. 2021 and ending December 31st, 2021 for various additional expenditures and revenues. Director Johns. Good evening. Preliminary figures for fiscal year 2021 had revenue, general fund revenues exceeding their budget by approximately $1,887,000 and general fund expenditures exceeding their budgets by $96,000. Before you tonight is Sorry, this represents an operating surplus of approximately $1.8 million before transfers. Um, detailed out is a by department listing of where these overages took place in the general fund and um, detailing the reasons why they went over as well as the revenue figures. Also included in this budget amendment is um, amendments, sorry, to the Harlem Business District 1, 2, and 3 funds, capital projects funds, debt service fund, parking lot fund, and police pension fund. I'm happy to go through any of the details for these overages if you'd like me to, um, but just wanted to point out of the revenue surpluses, um, 882,000 of that was from ARPA funds that was not anticipated receiving, but we also greatly exceeded our budget projections in sales tax, building revenues, and per capita sales tax by over 200,000 apiece. Thank you. Trustees, any questions? I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, and I, maybe I missed this, but I was wondering, did, how did we allocate the ARPA funds? The ARPA funds were budgeted um, in fiscal year 2022 to purchase an ambulance. Oh, yeah. And um, fire truck. A fire Thank truck. You, yes. I don't remember if it's a ladder truck or the pumper truck. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I remember now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, I can have a motion. Motion made. Mo motion by Trustee Gallego. Second. Second. Second by Trustee Evans. Ethan, if you please call the roll. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Gallego. Aye. Trustee Marshaska. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, last thing on our agenda tonight is trustee reports and communications. Do we have any? I'll go. Mr. Gal goes. Okay. So on uh, May 30th, which is Memorial Day, we'll have a service at St. Mary's brought to you by the American Legion Post 488. 
Originally, it was supposed to be on Guthrie Park. However, there are concerns about humidity, uh, wet grassy areas, and mosquitoes. So it's going to be moved indoor uh, for air conditioning and, and more comfortable um, arrangements. It's about an hour long or so. It'll be again in St. Mary's at 10 o'clock. And then, of course, on June 10th, we will have the River Lantern Night, which should take place here on the um, seating area by the River Walk. And that's open, both were open to the public. And that should be about 8 o'clock at night on that Friday. Thank you, Trustee Gallegos. Anything else? Hearing none, if I can have a motion to adjourn. Motion made. Motion by wait, Trustee. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, the executive session. Two executive sessions. <laughs> okay. We are going into session, executive session tonight. The board has a need for an executive session to discuss the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body to discuss the setting of a price for sale or lease of village property, to discuss the purchase or lease of real property for the use of the public body, and to discuss collective negotiating matters. The board will not reconvene and no final action will take place. I would ask for a motion and a second to adjourn to executive session. Motion to adjourn to executive session. Trustee uh, Gallagher, second. 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 Second by Trustee Pollock. Ethan. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Gallagher. Aye. Trustee Marshazga. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you.